good news, weather, sports, events, cooking, music, and more right here on your Madison County Weather Channel. Watch at MadisonKYLive.com, YouTube, Facebook, and Roku. Madison County Emergency Management wants to remind you, know your zone. Check them out, Madison County Emergency Management, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The Home and Community-Based Waiver Program, funded by Medicaid and administered through the Madison County Health Department, enables senior adults or persons of any age with disabilities to continue to live in their own homes. Attendant care services include light housekeeping, personal care assistance, mobility assistance, and other services. Call the Home and Community-Based Waiver Program today to speak to program staff at 859-623-3441. That's 859-623-3441. 3441. Metro Net Fiber. Love your internet. 100% fiber optic network for home, office, education, and business. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. Hey everybody, welcome to the big show tonight, Colleen. We got a lot of stuff going, a lot of stuff. We sure do, Randy. I'm just going to let you roll. Tell us what's coming up. Hey, uh, of course, we'll tell you how to take a look uh, at that weekend weather cam forecast. And we have a very special interview with Nathan Hutchison with the Richmond Register. And he's going to tell us all about the Bourbon Jam Music Festival and why they're excited to be the media sponsor. Sights and sounds of the Kentucky Guild of Artists and Craftsmen uh, opening reception. You're not going to want to miss that. Special video from Ellen N. Days in Berea. Sights and sounds of the Juneteenth 5K at Whitehall. Sights and sounds of the Richmond Area Arts Center a music series at Richmond Center. And we also have some sights and sounds of Colonel Charles Young. And Colleen, you know what we got it? You know what we got left? <laughs> the cane pole, fishing report, all that more coming up. We have a lot of sights and sounds, Randy. We have a lot of sights and sounds. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. Visit MadisonKYLive.com 24-7 and watch good news, local weather forecasts, daily sports updates, and upcoming events 24-7. Madison County Live, it's good news. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. Hey everybody, welcome back to the big show, Madison County Live on That's Saturday right. edition. We've had a really, I don't want to say big again, but we've had a great week here in Madison County. A lot of wonderful things going on thanks to so many friends out there. And uh, let's get into it, Randy. Let's, let's get, get into, into it. it, shall we? Hey, uh, first I want to tell you how to check out that weekend weather cam forecast at MadisonKYLive.com. Brought to you by Madison County Emergency Management, Madison County Health Department, the Cane Pole in Southern Hills Plaza, and of course, KYMedia.net. Get that three-day forecast. Why wait on your weather? Why would people do that, Colleen? Well, you know what, Randy? Sometimes they just don't know. So thank you for I know. both the ways they can find it, especially this time of year, summertime. It's always good to see what's going on. Take those That's right. Away. Absolutely. It sure is. Uh, we have a very special interview with Nathan Hutchison with the Richmond Register, and he's going to tell us all about the Bourbon Jam Music Festival and why they're excited to be the media sponsor. Mm -hmm. 
Madison County Live. And good news is brought to you by these great sponsors. Everybody, I'm with Nathan Hutchison here at the Richmond Register. Tell us about your involvement in this year's Bourbon Jam Music Festival. Well, actually, really kind of through you, uh, we, we, get, we, got, we got hooked up with Diane Turner and uh, We've been uh, trying to help her the best way we can, which is just spreading the word, really, uh, through social media and everything else. And uh, I didn't actually go to the event last year. I missed it. And uh, But I'm very excited to, be, to, to go over there this year, be a part of it. I'm a big music guy, as you can see from the office here. Absolutely. <laughs> but um, one thing we have uh, decided to do with Diane leading up to the Bourbon Jam is we're going to have, uh, we're hoping for five to six weeks leading up to the, the music festival that we're going to have uh, every Thursday night. We're going to have some of uh, those bands that are going to be part of that over here at the Richmond Register playing a little acoustic set uh, here in our uh, palatial studios. <laughs> and we're going to bring the guys and girls in and uh, interview them a little bit and have them play a little bit for us. And that'll all be leading up to uh, the event. So Diane's going to set us up with some of the bands. And then uh, you're going to be here, Randy, to film it for us. Absolutely. And, and uh, so we're just going to come in. We're going to get a chance to meet the bands, tell you a little bit about themselves. Almost all these bands are from the region, Lexington, Louisville, Cincinnati, uh, all that. And they, a lot of them play around here quite frequently, BBH and uh, you know uh, places like that. So we're excited to get them in here, get you guys a chance to get to know them. And we'll stream it live on Facebook. It's going to be totally free and uh, all that good stuff. So. Hope you guys will check it out on our Facebook page. All right, and Bourbon Jam Music Festival, it's in August. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all day. Give us some yeah. specifics on that that you know about. August 26th, uh, right over in the parking lot of the old Richmond Mall over there. Uh, two stages. I mean, Diane uh, has gone all out this year. I mean, because uh, last year was the first year she did it, uh, and but this year added a second stage. You were just telling me about Jim Beam right. is going to be there with a huge setup. Uh, with a big uh, type stuff. She has a lot of national sponsors, boots, uh, boot sponsors, and all kinds of stuff. So she is, uh, she is working her, her butt off, and she has made this uh, into uh, something that I think Richmond will be really excited about. Uh, hasn't announced a headliner yet. She keeps giving us uh, some hints, but she, <laughs> she won't tell us yet. But I'm sure she'll get a great band to be the, the headliner. Last year, uh, uh, who was it last year? It was uh, David Lee Murphy was last year. That's David, right. David Lee Murphy was the headliner last year. And uh, I'm sure she'll get somebody really good this year as well. And we keep waiting. So, Diane, tell us. Come on, tell us. <laughs> and follow Bourbon Jam Music Festival on Facebook. Yep, it's all over the place. But, yeah, but uh, here we'll let you know across all of our social media sites here uh, very soon, maybe beginning of January or July. Uh, we'll start uh, doing those every Thursday night. And uh, maybe we'll even let fans come in a little bit and kind of check it out. Maybe some of the bands, if they have, uh, you know, family, friends, or whatever, they can come in and ha kind of hang out. We have, we have a nice little open area out here That'll be sweet. Uh, that people can come in and check it out. And of course, we've still got art in here with the, your absolutely the, your, gallery, <laughs> the right. gallery house. So we got uh, we really put a lot of work into this building, and we we're looking forward to having folks come in and play for us and uh, doing it live on Facebook. That's right. And one more on July the twelfth. It'll be our last one for the yeah time. the gallery house. Yeah, it's, right. it's been a lot of fun. We're, and uh, here at the Richmond Register too, I, well, we're just doing this. I'm just shamelessly plug us. Uh, we do have our reading room open now too, where oh, that's right. uh, all the bound volumes uh, for mostly for about the most about the last 70 years or so, the bound volumes of the paper are all here. If anybody wants to come in and check those out uh, during regular business hours, nine to five, Monday through Friday. Uh, but we do encourage you to do that as well. But we're looking forward to uh, being a part of the uh, Bourbon Jam Fest. You know me, Randy. It's the two big passions in my life for sports and music. Sports and, and music, that's and, right. Uh, so this is, uh, this is awesome, and we're very uh, glad to pair up with her and help her in any way possible to make this an amazing event uh, for Richmond, Madison County, and everywhere. All right. Thanks, Nathan. No problem. Hey everybody, it's this week's Art Shot here on Madison County Live. And our featured artist this week is Lloyd Alvis Agee. He has been painting since he was 13. He paints with oil and acrylic paints. He's also a member of the Kentucky Guild of Artists and Craftsmen, the Shallowee Guild and Gallery on Main. He's also a board member at Gallery on Main and co-chair of the gallery. He teaches a class at the Richmond Area Art Center as well as a nursing home. And he gets his inspiration from the beauty around me right here in Madison County. And he currently has exhibits he and his students at Gallery on Main, on Main Street at Community Trust Bank, and at the Richmond Area Arts Council. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. Thanks to Nathan for coming on the show. We really ap appreciate the Richmond Register being a media sponsor of the Bourbon Jam Music Festival. Stay tuned for more great information. That's going to be a big event in August. 
the Bourbon Jam Music Festival. Lots of special, maybe some live segments coming up with a special host too. So you're going to want to watch for that. Really looking forward to that event. Very good. And thanks to Diane and her entire team. We also <laughs> attended Thursday night, uh, the Kentucky Guild of Artists and Craftsmen's opening reception, yes. their new location in Old Town Berea. I went down, I got some uh, video and some audio and some great interviews of introductions of the space down there and the artist, Colleen. Watch this. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. It's for about 37 years now, so I'm getting the hang of it finally. <laughs> but the pieces I brought, the reason they fit in with the destinations theme is the colors. I'm known for bright colors, and um, several years ago when I went to the Caribbean, um, the blues and greens of the water and just the culture there, everything really inspired me to do the combinations of those colors. So it's Destination Caribbean for my baskets. And here's a basket right there. Yeah. That's one of the, one of his works. And um, so we're so happy to have you featured and thank you for showing tonight. Um, Derek's also a member of the board, so um, standard. So Thanks it's good to have you. you. And our other featured artist is Bob Berger and he has transportation destinations and the trains. <laughs> So, I, I retired when I was 61 or 2, so she and one of our friends in the neighborhood, like, they got me to take lessons with this woman in my neighborhood. So, we, this is, um, you know, in, north of Tampa, and we, we went, and uh, she'd been painting a couple of years, and I've been drawing my whole life. But I never had painted, so here I'm at the tender age of uh, 65 or whatever. Yeah, 65. Um, I'm taking these lessons, and I did what's right. I had um, a package of six Royal and Lang nickel brushes. I had a palette. This is big. And I knew what I was doing. Well, actually, it was good lead. I, I've been painting since the first year I started. I mean, I've been selling since the first year of painting, so I've, it, it's been fun. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't want to do like some of you guys do, to do it for a living. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, I mean, the, the market is whatever. But it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Well, we're happy to have you, thank and thank you, you for featuring. Thank you. We appreciate it. And then we have Patricia Williams, who is another a painter as well. She does watercolors, and she is the treasurer of the Kentucky Hill. <laughs> yes, just voted in as treasurer last uh, couple days ago, and I'm happy to be here. Happy to be part of the Guild. Uh, I'm not even complete with my first year with the Guild yet, so it's been, it's been quite the journey. Um, I'm a watercolor artist. Um, that's all I do is water arts. Um, watercolor, ink, um, and uh, you know, my, uh, my work has evolved over time. I started out doing fairly um, representational, realistic work like Bob's. And I'm sort of transitioning into more of an abstract, uh, more impressionist style now. So, hope you like it, and um, it's good to see all of you here. 100% reflection, because it's 100% reflection. It is all water. You're not seeing anything with the inner harbor in this shot. But anyone who's been there knows, like, where Barnes & Neville is in the Hard Rock. There's all those flags right up there before the bridge. So these are the flags, and that is actually the reflection of these flags here. 
and then I flipped it <laughs> in order to make it just like a little abstract and interesting. So it's printed on metal. It's photography, which is printed on metal because I try to print on glass. I print on museum quality paper and I print on metal. I always try and stretch whatever art I'm doing. So I'm Ellen London, and um, I'm now living in Kentucky, but Lexington, but I lived for 35 years all over the world. And so the whole premise of everything I've done has been um, wearable art so that people know that different cultures are really the same as us. Um, everybody has the same. So we were 20 years in Africa and 15 in Asia, and I... Do most I did do only wearable art, and so in the last couple of years, um, each one is a collection. But this one is actually it's actually a jacket inside here, and um, it was pre-pandemic when people were walking around. These are windows in North Africa and Morocco that you windows and doors that you would see as you walked, and then I paired it with a um, a technique that I developed. Um, this is actually wet felting, but I've actually migrated in uh, calligraphy silk that I've done, and I've put a, a phrase on here that says, that just deals with humanity, I bow to the light in you, and you bow to the light in me. Just mm -hmm. kind of a mutual respect for humanity. So that's my work. <laughs> so any artist out there, when we do call to artist, Please just um, get this information for the members and um, we would be happy to show your work. The next show will probably be coming up in a couple months. So, but we also have Lloyd Alvis AG and he is a painter and he has a work here. I have a picture over here. I'm uh, Alvis AG. I've been with the Guild for about nine years and I've been a board member for about a month. This piece right here is just a couple hundred yards down the railroad track up there. Well, I've, I've also been with the Guild for several years. And uh, this is my wife, Barbara. Oh, hi. Uh, hi, Barbara. <laughs> we're foreigners, so uh, I was born in Oberlin, Ohio, by way of um, Texas and South Carolina and Louisiana. Mississippi, a few other places. Um, Barbara's from Texas. Dallas, born in Dallas. Um, this is I do, piece right here. Yeah, I do wood turning, have been doing it since 1996. Oh, very nice. Um, this is a, a, a decanter, I call it. Uh, it's made from magnolia. Uh, a highly figured magnolia and a medallions on each side of uh, big leaf maple burl, which is also what the stopper is made of. It is completely hollow, although it, it wouldn't hold water because it would leak around this burl. Mm. Um, but it's dyed, it has the red dye on it, and this has black on it, and then it's cut back to show the, the figure. Uh, but this is, uh, my, my destination is uh, the dining car and the train or the club car. Nice. Um, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so. And finally, we'll finish with the president of the Kentucky Guild, who also has shown, and this is Preston Sounder. Nice to see everybody here. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, we wouldn't be here without the artist. I mean, that's what the Kentucky Guild of Artists and Craftsmen is all about. It's not about one person, it's not about two, it's about Kentucky artists. Uh, I know a lot of people don't understand that we are not just Berea. We are Paducah, we are Pikeville, we are 50 miles outside the border of the state of Kentucky, we have members. So, we are back. <laughs> we. Uh, had some fun for the last three four months it's it's been a challenge uh today really is the first day that i feel that the 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 office gallery is is back we're back we we, we hung our sign today once you hang your sign that's generally the last thing you do and you're good to go but uh we hope to move forward from this time um you better work 
Uh huh. You got your work too. No, I, I haven't. I haven't got one up. Mine's in there. Uh, He's still working. But but yeah, I mean, I, I'll have more work. Mine's work in progress. My my studio's under construction, so as soon as it gets done, I'll have some more work. I I do acrylic and watercolor. Uh, me and Lloyd kind of bounce ideas <laughs> off each other all the time. But yeah, uh, mainly just right now, my focus has been getting the gill back, getting us back on our feet financially, all across the board. Um, I've been president for two years, and guys, these people have worked their tails off. I mean, we have started pretty much from scratch. I mean, it just... You would not believe the stuff that we went through to get it back to where it needed to be. Uh, it's no longer a one-person guild. It is now truly a guild for Kentucky. And we are the Kentucky Guild of Arts and Craftsmen. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. Thanks for inviting us down, Madison County Live, uh, from the Kentucky Guild of Artists and Craftsmen. Check that out. They're going to be doing a lot more stuff. they got some summer events, and, of course, their big fall market is coming up again in October. Very good. A nice location, indeed. Thanks for sharing that with yep, us, Randy. Yep, very nice location. And while I was down there, guess what was going on, Colleen? I don't know. The Ellenin Days in Berea. That's always a big, a big, big event. And I put together a little video with the sights and sounds of the Ellenin Days in Berea. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. Thanks for Berea Tourism for inviting us down to take a look at LNN Days in Berea. That's always a very special event. Lots of folks, 
Lots of happenings, lots of going on about that railroad tradition down there where Berea Tourism is. History rich for sure. Very good. It sure is. And of course, the Juneteenth 5K at Whitehall, that was a lot of fun. It sure was. Fantastic event. I think a lot of folks, that was an inaugural event. So yes, absolutely. To everyone involved in that and of course to all of the wonderful participants. So um uh, Hope to see that event take place again next year. It's a whole lot of fun. That's right. And of course, while I was there, you know, I took some video and audio of the inaugural event. Watch this. Madison County, and we are excited, if you're not from this county, to welcome you here. One of the inspirations for this event came from a Juneteenth gala presentation that happened back in 2022, when I gave a presentation about the Underground Railroad and the African Americans who were freedom seekers on the many routes to freedom. I shared a very personal story about my great, great, great grandmother, Emily, and how she walked from Waycross, Georgia as an enslaved person. Although she would live in slavery her entire life, I know that she dreamed of a day when her descendants would be free. A photo of that quilt is on display and you can see it here at the race. The second inspiration came from a question that was asked at our Juneteenth Health Fair last year. The Madison County Health Department gathered public input to answer a question. What does a healthy community look like? And the majority of the comments specifically mentioned opportunities for people to be physically active, walking, exercising, and enjoying outdoor recreation. And it is these two events that inspired the idea to commemorate Juneteenth each year by walking or running to honor the bravery and determination of these African Americans who persevered on their journey to freedom. So please let me again welcome you and thank you for your participation personally as I participated on the committee to help organize and let me ask you to please welcome David Morana. He is the first vice president of the Richmond Madison County NAACP and he has a few remarks about our partnerships and our sponsor. Uh, today I just want to thank everybody first of all for coming out and supporting today's uh, Juneteenth Freedom Fund. I'm honored to be here today on the behalf of the Richmond Madison County uh, branch of the NAACP and our president uh, Reverend Mitch Brown. Uh, today's event is not just about raising funds, but also about raising awareness. Uh, we still have a long and difficult journey towards freedom, a journey that began over 150 years ago. We need to continue to educate ourselves and others about the history of slavery, its impact on our country, and the ongoing fight for uh, racial justice. Let us take a moment to recognize the organizations and individuals who have worked tirelessly to make this event possible. Their dedication and hard work are an inspiration to us all. The local NAACP branch has an amazing partnership with the Madison County Health Department, who has worked with us on a series of community activities and events in celebration of the Juneteenth holiday, such as voter registrations, a health fair, and a gala. Our most recent partnership with the department is this inaugural Juneteenth Freedom uh, 5K run. It is our goal through this partnership and other collaborative efforts to have a healthier community. Uh, we have expanded our collaborative efforts and it has yielded two new presenting sponsors for the Juneteenth Freedom 5K. We are very grateful for their enormous support and their participation uh, today. They are Baptist Health Richmond with President Greg Gerald. Where is Team Baptist Health? Thank you. And we also have Team St. Joe's uh, Berea with um, President John Yanes. Where is Team St. Joseph? All right, thank you all. In addition to recognizing uh, this holiday and the courage demonstrated by previous generations, it is fitting to provide all the proceeds from the race to support three local charities. The Maurice Hibbert Non-Traditional Scholarship, 
which specially targets adults within the community who are pursuing a course of study leading to a diploma, a certificate, on-the-job training at a trade, skill, technical, or vocational school, the New Liberty Family Shelter, who is dedicated to providing temporary shelter and services to homeless families with dependent children in the community, regardless of the race, color, creed, or protective classes. And finally, the Friends of Maple Grove Cemetery, who is committed to telling and documenting the African-American story of Richmond and Madison County through the many persons entered uh, in the cemetery. More information about each charity is provided on the pamphlet on the table. As we participate in, day's event, in today's event, let us remember the struggles of those who came before us, the sacrifices they made, and the progress we have made. We cannot forget the injustice and inequality that still exists in our society, but we can take steps towards change. Now please welcome back up to the stage here, uh, Miss Nancy Crew. Thank you. It's going to be hard to uh, top what Judy and David said. They've covered the thank yous and the significance of the holidays and the main partnerships that uh, brought this about. So I'll, uh, I'll confine my thank yous. That was my job. I chair the uh, health committee of the NAACP that, that planned this event. And my first thank you are to all the volunteers, especially my team that came out and helped organize things, put up with uh, my uh, inexperience with uh, organizing a race. I've discovered I'm a better public health director than I am a race organizer, but it all came together and I'm grateful for all of their help. Uh, second, I want to thank Race Rise. They've helped very much pull all of this together. I, again, when you're a neophyte, brand new at this, it's great to have the experts. I want to thank uh, Vern here, Vern Kern. He is their rep out in the field here. And last but not least, I want to thank you all, everybody here, the runners, members of the community, people who are cheering on the runners, helpers, people of goodwill everywhere. We're so thankful you're here. Have a wonderful event. Bless you all. Be safe and enjoy this beautiful day in this important and commemorative race. And I will turn it now over to Vern again. Thank you, Vern. Weather was perfect, a good turnout for a first ever event. Can't wait to see it next year, the Juneteenth 5K at Whitehall. Very good. All right. Busy, busy. Busy, next busy. Hey, did you uh, did you go to, did you check out the Bit and Pity Band at the uh, music series at Richmond Center? I didn't have an opportunity to do so, but I know who did. That's right. I sure did. Uh, here's, uh, here, here's a little music, a uh, little video from the Richmond area. Arts Council Music Series at Richmond Center.
Thanks for Randy uh, Westbrook. He always provides great, great video, and he he knows he knows I use it. <laughs> he does. <laughs> we have had that discussion before. Very good. Bet Penny Band. Always great to hear them. That Richmond concert se- Richmond Center concert series goes on through July twenty eighth, and that grand finale is going to be Taste of Richmond. <gasps> Taste of through. Richmond, and that's in the works now, right? It sure is. More information coming out next week. Exciting stuff, everybody. You're not going to want to miss that. Hey, Charles Young. Well, not the Colonel Charles Young, but Colonel Charles Young was out at Mount Zion Christian Church, and it was part of the Chautauqua series, and um, they, they always do such a good job. And I don't know if you know about Charles Young, but he, uh, because of racism, he got basically uh, not demoted, but not promoted to Brigadier General until Governor Andy Bashir did that posthumously. And that's why he became a brigadier general, even worked its way up to the president of the United States. And President Biden gave him that designation. So that's a great honor. And thanks to our governor for doing that for Charles Young. So watch this little segment I did out there at Mount Zion Christian Church. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. States Army. I've just recently gone to Fort Des Moines, Iowa. They have established a colored officers training camp there and there were over 1,000 Negro men training to serve as officers for the coming war in Europe. 1,000! 1,000 men like me. They were, they were happy to see me and I was happy to see them. At least a hundred of them well, I trained some, or they served me. I have a hand in a bridge there across me to become officers. I can remember when there were only two of us in the entire army. Huh. I can remember when I was the only one in the entire army. I was very happy to see them. Went back to Ohio. Decided I would come down to Kentucky, visit some family and friends, promote the war effort. I think I see a few young men in here who might be of service age. I'd like to talk to them about this. Now, as you know, I am the highest ranking Negro officer in the Army. And there are Negro regiments being formed to go fight, and I should be at the head of them. And I've been waiting to receive orders. I have not got any official understanding of what my role will be. Well, I received a message while in Ohio, and now I know. I have been promoted to colonel, and I've been retired at the same time. <laughs> Put on some inactive list so that I might still serve the Army, but I'm not going to Europe. The Army has denied me. They have denied me. How could this be? I'm a colonel. There are Negro regiments being formed. I should be at the head of one of them. But the Army has decided otherwise. Now this retirement was based on the medical conditions that I was diagnosed with during my promotion to colonel. The medical board indicated that I have high blood pressure. I have a kidney disorder, and I have several other chronic ailments that have come from serving in the Army. The board has also indicated that none of these ailments have stopped me from serving and that they would not keep me from serving further. So they did say that, yes, I could go to serve in Europe. But there were other forces fighting against that. And I believe a decision had already been made before I even began that promotion. I have lived my entire career fighting the color line. 
And now that the war is on, white officers, many Southern white officers have said that they will not serve under a Negro officer. Now they have complained to their Southern congressmen, and those Southern congressmen have complained to our Southern president, Woodrow Wilson. And yes, I think the decision was made before I ever began the review. So I am denied, and I'm not going to Europe. I love the history of Kentucky and Madison County and around the area. So that's always nice when people get their just deserves. I love that. Absolutely. Very good. All right. Yeah, fantastic. Woo! Man, we got a lot of stuff going on. But you know what it's time for now, don't you? It's your it's your oh. special segment. I know you look forward to it every week. <laughs> well, there are so many. Give me a hint. <laughs> Okay, just wanted to make sure we are going to exercise with Candace. I love that interpretation, Randy. <laughs> Here's Candace coming up next. Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. Hey, y'all, it's time to exercise with Candace. Mostly a Maverick and I are at a beautiful waterfall behind me. Let's do some jumping jacks. One, two, Madison County Live and Good News is brought to you by these great sponsors. Thanks to Candace, and of course, you can always see all of Candace's exercise videos on her own playlist on our website, right. madisonkylive.com, and of course, on our YouTube channel, Exercise with Candace. All right. Well, Randy, it has been a great week with you and friends. It's been a wonderful week with you in Madison County. Randy's worn out. I am Randy. wore out, folks. <laughs> and it's been a great time for sure we want to thank you so much for joining us tonight and every night at 8 p.m to 14 catch us live 6 30 a.m throughout the week that's right and now i know i know you're going to go to the cane pole and pick up some bait hey why not the cane pole fishing report is going to wrap everything up for us randy that's right folks <laughs> Have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend. We're going to see you bright and early, 6.30 a.m. here on Madison County Live. And good morning, Madison County. We sure will. Happy Father's Day. Madison County Live. And good news is brought to you by these great sponsors. The weekly Kentucky Fish and Wildlife Fishing Report, brought to you by the Cane Pole in Southern Hills Plaza. This is Jeff Crosby with the Central District Fishing Report. Water temperatures are running in the upper 70s to lower 80s across the district. Water conditions are good in many of our area lakes, with the exception of a little bit of algae that's growing at most of the lakes across the district. It's a great time of year to get out and catch a few bluegill as they are up uh, spawning at area lakes such as uh, Beaver, Elmer, Corinth, McNeely, and Bolts. Lakes are excellent options for catching a few quality panfish this time of year. Try your luck fishing wax worms, mealworms, or red worms to catch a few of these fish at these area lakes. Bass fishing at area lakes are good. Uh, bass can be caught on a variety of lures such as crate baits, spinner baits, bladed baits, or even soft plastics uh, fished around shoreline cover. Also, this is a great time of year to fish your local streams such as Elkhorn, South Fork Licking, 
Floyd's Fork are excellent options this time of year to float and uh, catch a few quality smallmouth and rock bass. Try your luck with small crankbaits or spinnerbaits or even small jigs to catch a few of these smallmouth and rock bass this time of year. And finally, don't forget uh, your local fins lakes in your area. These uh, ponds are great opportunities uh, for good bank fishing opportunities. Many of these ponds have uh, been stocked with channel catfish this time of year. Plus they have established bass and bluegill populations which can make for some great fishing this time of year. Check out the department's website at fw.ky.gov for a complete list of fins lakes in your area. So grab a pole, enjoy some great summer fishing, and I hope to see you on the water. Alert FM is your new device for in-home emergency alerts provided by Madison County Emergency Management Agency and the Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program, or CSEP. This device will alert you to chemical emergencies at the Bluegrass Army Depot, as well as severe weather impacting Madison County, Kentucky. These devices should stay with the home or business they were shipped to because they will only work in the zone they are programmed for. Wondering about your old advisor alert radio? We will properly recycle these old units. Simply drop yours off to a recycling container at one of these locations. Madison County Emergency Operations Center. Madison County Road Department North. Madison County Road Department South. Or Berea Utilities. If you need further assistance or have questions about Alert FM, please contact Madison County EMA CSEP. Madison County EMA CSEP, your partner in preparedness. Things that folks need, food, shelter, clothing, medical care, transportation, and more. That's where the GoDirectory.info website comes in. Community agencies and churches are providing services that folks need across Madison and Estill counties, including Richmond, Berea, and Irvin. We're bringing everyone together for the common good. Visit GoDirectory.info now and see how you or your agency and organization can make our community stronger by combining all of our individual strengths into one solid, purpose-driven mission. Becoming a new parent can be an overwhelming experience, and babies don't come with instruction manuals. The HANDS program is available to answer your questions and provide you with the needed support. The HANDS program is free and available to new and expectant moms and for dads by joining the program during pregnancy or any time before the child is three months old. Let us help you handle the stresses that new families face by calling the Madison County Health Department, 859-626-4263. <laughs> Metro Net Fiber, love your internet, 100% fiber optic network for home, office, education, and business. The home and community-based waiver program funded by Medicaid and administered through the Madison County Health Department enables senior adults or persons of any age with disabilities to continue to live in their own homes. Attendant care services include light housekeeping, personal care assistance, mobility assistance, and other services. Call the Home and Community-Based Waiver Program today to speak to program staff at 859-623-3441. That's 859-623-3441. Thirty-four, forty-one. Good news, weather, sports, events, cooking, music, and more right here on your Madison County Weather Channel. Watch at MadisonKYLive.com, YouTube, Facebook, and Roku. Visit MadisonKYLive.com 24-7 and watch good news, local weather forecasts, daily sports updates, and upcoming events 24-7. Madison County Live. It's good news. <laughs> 